David Cohen, somebody mentioned David Cohen to me, I was asking about him the other day. Oh yeah, thank you. Scottish dowser, uh, based in Creef, uh, another self-taught dowser. And uh, David has done a huge amount of work walking across the wilds of Scotland, uh, going from this cutmark stone down here, which is near where he lives in Creef, and it's on this uh, fault line here, which is the Highland Boundary Fault. And he found these curved lines which seem to echo the cut marks on the stone. So, you know, he has a sort of dumbbell-shaped pattern that he was dowsing out all the way around here. And this extends out, you know, hundreds of miles. David has walked literally thousands of miles across the Scottish countryside following this thing. Uh, that was his first book, Ley Lines and Earth Energies, where he talks about this. Uh, he's later sort of integrated this with the more of a straight uh, lays, um, which he reckons are starting and finishing at volcanic plugs. So like, uh, here's one up in St Kilda, and that straight one runs all the way down here to North Berwick. And his latest book is uh, Ley Lines in the UK and USA. So we're going to start here, at the top of her head, asking the same thing about non-beneficial energy, give me a yes response. And we'll go around until we get a yes and then we make our three little marks. And we do this as we go, instead of waiting. And you just go all the way around the outside of the body. Same, same thing, three marks. No, it's still, it's, it's just swing, giving me a yes response. No, I just, I just started that way. Oh, wait a minute, okay. Right here. And we go all the way around the outside, okay? Then we come back and same thing, pendulum going, asking the same question, down through the middle of the face, back and forth and back and forth, in the head, and we keep going. Remember, I said they could be unhealthy. They could have a health issue here. Okay, so the first thing I want you to do is I want you to begin to think about and jot, even if it's just two or three words, what do you think the problem is or your blocks about money or abundance are? Is it family patterns? Is it spiritual stuff? Is it the church says it's better to give than receive? Is it I don't deserve enough? Is it I can't make more money than my folks did? Whatever, just jot a couple of thoughts down. And let me explain, this is really a one or preferably a two day class. So we're gonna condense all of that into about an hour or so. So the faster you can do and write, the better it's gonna be. We didn't get through all this the other day and we're gonna get through as much of it as we possibly can. Okay, now ask, now you've got your little thing figured out, your little manifestation goal thing. What percentage of your energy is in abundance? What percentage are you vibrating in abundance? What percentage are you vibrating in stagnant? Like a, a, a river or a pond full of green slimy stuff and old bugs and junk grumping around and it's not doing anything and it stinks. <laughs> stagnant. like in the backyard and the old tire or something like that. Stagnant energy. And what percentage is in lack? Like there's just not enough, there's never gonna be enough, I always have to struggle, whatever. Lack. The, what we did with the walnuts with Russell Swanson, he was tracking the story of all these ancient walls, so we have no idea their history, uh, that st are striping the ridges, uh, the spines of the, of the hills all over the Bay Area, particularly the East Bay Hills. That's one of the more dramatic ones. And uh, Nicholas took me to my first one that was in Berkeley. You can go there if you're in the Bay Area. It's in Tilden Park. Uh, there's a, a peak uh, that I'm sort of standing on the side of called Volmer Peak. It's marked on the maps. On the other side of it is the steam train. At the, for the kids and stuff at, at Tilden Park, right off of Grizzly Peak. So we were very easy to get to this site. Nicholas took me over there, and we came around the corner and got the first view of it, and you can see along the fence line here, there's a little bit of stones, and then it gets a little more, you can really start to see a wall in there where it's you know knee high or something, right? And Nicholas says, and there, there it is, there's the wall. 
And I'm looking at it, and I'm saying, really? That's all you see is a wall? I'm looking at a mound. If we were in England, there would be a little brass plaque saying protected by the National Trust. This is a Bronze Age mound or fairy mound or, you know, there would be something labeling it. So what I'm seeing, and this is because a geomancer's just been invited. You know, it, we're, uh, we look at the lay of the landscape and we feel the energy is moving through the land. About 10 years ago is when I read probably one of the very first articles on the relationship between gut health and schizophrenia. Um, and how if you improve the gut health, it seemed to improve the symptoms or the, um, or the um, effects of this chemical imbalance in the brain. Um, and, but now there's about 200 articles out there relating to all sorts of different systems and stuff like that. Um, and our gut health. Now, if you don't know what the microbiome is, it is a collection of bacteria, fungus, parasites, all kinds of other microscopic particulates that live inside of our stomach, okay? And um, it's what allows us to digest and process nutrients into our body, okay? And if it's not working, um, we, we're basically starving. Our body just isn't getting nutrients. And it doesn't matter whether you eat organic or raw or paleo or gluten-free or any of that stuff. If you can't actually digest your food, your body's hungry all the time. And that sets it into a lot of chemical responses and reactions. It puts a lot of cortisol, it might also increase your adrenals, et cetera. So when our body's under distress, it creates more stress and distress. And we go into crisis mode. It also, encourage, it also you know, uh, manifests as disease, both physical and mental. So just feel the room right now. And then I'm going to put this on here, and we're just going to expand the energy here into the room. Yeah. So we're just going to allow this to spread, and it has a particular kind of energy. These are mainly used for EMF, but they clear other things. But what they're, they're sold for is EMF. So we're just going to let it, let the power spot spread it into the room. So if you can get a sense of, you know, that EMF energy. It actually softens that energy. But you can have your own experience. Now we get into the work that I've been doing for the last 20 years, and this um, takes these very strange, spooky action at a distance kinds of behaviors of quantum physics and moves it into the classical world. Um, what I recognize is that quantum phenomena do occur everywhere, not just on the quantum Planck scale. Consciousness is actually the essence of how one identifies as oneself amidst a history of interrelatedness that through observing brings forth a world. And we've got increasing proof showing that this in case, um, this is the case. This is the, a book I recommend. It's a little technical, um, but if you like that kind of thing, it's got the actual physics equations in it. It also has really great prose and good English. Um, it's written well so that the layperson can read it, just skip the equations, read the text. And it's a book by Jerome Busemeyer and Peter Bruza. And it shows that the way that we think, the way that we make decisions, is a very close match to what you would expect to see um, if indeed we were using quantum processing to make decisions, to remember things.